We are in the region Auvergne Rhone Alp and in the department Allier. And one of those typical products coming from the Allier department is the Charolais beef. And the Charolais beef comes from the Charolais cow. The Charolais cow is a white, big, very, very muscular, beefy cow. Produces great beef. Good afternoon. Another episode, and this is going to be a bit of an exciting episode. I don't know many, how, in how many parts yet, but uh, it, it's going to be a job that I have been uh, anticipated for a long time. I've been thinking and pondering about for a long time. Have uh, had countless sleepless nights because. Um, this is a job that could go horribly wrong. Um, we are going to uh, take most out of this wall in order to uh, install two opening window windows in frames. The measurements of the windows are one meter wide. That is uh, three feet and something. I'll look it up by uh, 115 centimeter high. Two of them and um, in order to do that I uh, I need to ensure that there's enough support in the wall to carry the roof because the window frames they should not be carrying any load I uh, have bought a really large uh, a lento 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 if you know what I mean by now 15 by 15 centimeter 4 meter long oak old oak heavy as hell and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, take out 15 centimeter under this wall plate this is basically a lentil a wall plate but uh, I'm not sure how much weight this can carry Obviously, what you see here is carrying uh, half of the roof, but I don't know how much these metal uh, thingies are actually carrying. I, I think quite a bit, in all honesty. So, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, remove 15 centimeter underneath. Also, here, 15 centimeter. This is the last concrete block. Up here is brickwork. I'm going to remove that, I'm going to position the lentil in place, secure it upwards into uh, the deck, the wall plate, sorry, and with anchors in the concrete blocks. I'm going to open up the concrete blocks, anchor the wall plate in it, close them and fill them up with concrete. Then we're going to uh, remove this whole uh, metal frame. We're going to remove part of this wall, we're going to remove most of this wall uh, to a, a level about, about here and then I'm going to build it back up with, uh, with these concrete blocks that we've used before. I really like them, they're, they're great. It's easy, real easy to work with and strong. Um, yeah, so we're going to have five concrete blocks horizontal and one pillar in the middle position the window frames in and uh, close it all up and finish it um, yeah big job but also it has impact because you're gonna change the look uh, from the outside of the house and from the inside big time so it's it's you know uh, the whole the whole neighborhood will will finally realize hey we're really doing something with this house they have seen me coming and going and they hear noises coming from inside the house but they haven't really seen anything outside of the house so it, it, it's it's going to be one of those jobs you know now in order to break open this wall which is carrying the roof I have made a support 
as you know last episode we have finished reinforcing the whole roof I have installed this beam underneath the floor beams or the ceiling beams looking from here and I have installed these two posts and they are hopefully going to carry the whole weight of the roof these plus the walls because they also carry a considerable portion of, of the weight uh, this is uh, a semi-permanent installation meaning they will stay up for the until this job is finished uh, until we can release the tension so um, I have uh, screwed this beam into the ceiling beams then I have screwed uh, this post I forgot the name into this beam and I have secured it with one uh, plug it's a metal plug for concrete in uh, in the floor I've drilled a hole in the floor and secured it there so this is just this is just strong this is not going to move anymore drilling holes in my new concrete floor look these are the uh, these are the plugs that I use. I, I, I think they're called shields or something. See what, uh, what is happening with these plugs is, uh, if you haven't seen them yet, you just tighten, uh, you just tighten the nut and by that you pull the threaded insert out and slowly it expands in in the concrete it's it's uh, got to be careful with those things they're really 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 strong I think we'll be fine usually I over engineer things just because I'm insecure I don't know what the calculations are but uh, I think this is going to work Otherwise, uh, we'll just build a new small house. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, so there's, uh, there's a difference of uh, about two and a half centimeters from one side to, to the other side. When I, uh, when I have the laser line set to horizontal, uh, two and a half centimeter difference is about an inch. And this is measured the distance between the laser line and uh, the uh, wall plate. This one. So the dilemma is now what are you going to do? I mean, I've got that new uh, lintel. Are we going with the slope of the wall plate? Because eventually the window frames are going to sit below it and you want to have the window frames straight, right? You want to have them level. So somewhere two and a half inch needs to be filled up. Is that going to be between the wall plate and the lintel? Or is that going to be between the, li the lintel and the window frame? And this is assuming that the lintel is completely square and straight. I'm, I'm inclined to think that uh, that we install the lintel in the same line as the wall plate and then uh, fill up underneath the lintel between the lintel and the uh, window frames because I can't I, I, I don't know yet how straight that lintel is I also don't know what it's going to do over time and if we have some sort of a flexible uh, filling in between the lintel and the window frame then the windows will stay straight because the windows are yeah the windows are going to be secured in the new concrete blocks they're not going to move they're not going to warp yeah there's a lot of thinking and uh, taking breaks Thinking, reconsidering in this process, it's not only hard work, 
every step should uh, need to really be considered. So I've moved uh, the lintel, uh, moved it from the living room to here because I, I think I need this extra support. You know, you can't have too many supports, can you? And uh, once the uh, the lintel is cut to size, I can move the support further forward, further towards the wall. I have one more one more stanchion. I've got four stanchions at the moment. But I want to keep that uh, for tomorrow, for when I need to lift the lintel into position. Because that that's going to be a tough job. I got to hoist it and secure it and hoist it and secure it that sort of uh, thing if you if you're with three four people then uh, you lift it up and you put it in place but uh, that's that's not the case <laughs> He's in! He's in! I took uh, some brute force but uh, no accidents. That's uh, that's how we won it and how we planned it. But you never know how it worked out. It worked out fine. A lot of work. Took the most of the day but uh, ah. the land tower is in. Now we can start uh, breaking down these walls more and more, building up new from concrete blocks and then uh, install the window frames. The window frames, I need to varnish them, they're raw wood. Yeah, maybe that's the first thing I need to do, varnish the window frames because they need two coats before they go in. Ah, oh, I'm going to tidy up and uh, 
that's it for today. Cheers. Right. Whoa. Uh, today we're going to uh, varnish the window frames. We bought them uh, untreated. And uh, they need to be treated before they're going to be placed. Now, uh, one of the requirements uh, or restrictions of uh, Batiment de France, the governing body who determines uh, what uh, the exterior of a house should look like, has determined that the, wood, that the frames need to be in wood. And uh, we're going to, uh, to varnish them. I, uh, I ordered a really good varnish that I've worked with before. It's uh, AP Varnish. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a varnish uh, basically for the marine industry, for boats. And uh, it just works uh, like a dream. And also it's a very, very strong and durable varnish. It's designed. To, uh, to be applied on the cap rails and exterior parts of boats that are exposed to the weather, uh, sun, uh, wind, uh, salt water, all the time. So I'm going to give it uh, the first coat, which is a 50% thinned one, and then uh, the second coat, which uh, I'll do a 25% thinned one, and then after that, uh, I think two more coats uh, uh, regular just uh, not with thinners. So I must say I'm, uh, I'm slightly I intimidated with window frames. I've done work on door frames before, window frames. It's, uh, it, it's quite, uh, quite a trade working on these things. Installing them and making sure that everything uh, functions uh, as it should. Um, I've propped them up here. And uh, I'm going to strip them from, uh, from the hinges, the fittings, and uh, oh, I forget one thing, I should make a photo first, so that I'll never get into the situation that I don't know where all the parts need to go back. So I've made photos of the hinges and these closing fittings and I'm uh, going to be smart, I'll keep everything uh, in a Tupperware box so that I don't lose anything in the process. At the same time uh, I am uh, working on some wood. Uh, some fascia boards for the uh, under the roof where the rain gutter is going to sit on on the outside it's, it's being treated at the moment with a uh, fungicide pesticide kind of uh, treatment it's, uh, it's transparent it's really thin I applied two coats on uh, each side of the wood um, and this board is going to be painted in the colors of the house. After, uh, all the wood that I've installed in the roof has also been treated with, uh, with a fungicide. So now that the uh, linto is uh, installed, I am going to cut away the wall where I need to create the opening for the two windows. I need to know how deep I can cut and later how wide. And how deep I have to cut is quite simple. The windows, they are, we bought them as 115 centimeter high windows, but I remeasured them and they're actually 118 centimeter. So, measure twice, cut once. So, 118. I am going to... Uh, I'm going to install a, uh, a latch, a window latch, a window sill. And that is approximately 10 centimeter high. 
And then the first row of stones, I'm not going to place the windows on top of these uh, stones here. I'm just going to uh, mason in a row of uh, concrete blocks. Just because I want to create a very strong base. These concrete blocks are 19 high, 19 cm. So I arrive at 140 seven centimeter I need to cut I need to open underneath the lentil I want to have uh, one centimeter uh, a gap say so half a centimeter on top half a centimeter below so I got a cut one four eight deep 148 is my number. So I've set up the uh, the laser level. Let me show you. The laser level should be uh, 148 below the lento. And the lento here is at the lowest point because it's actually not a straight line, as you can expect, not a horizontal line. So I got a measure from the lowest point. This is one four nine. Yeah. That's one four nine. That's okay actually. Let me just recalculate quickly. So one eighteen. And 19, 128, 147, 147, 147, yeah, 148, yeah, I marked it at 149, I don't know why, um, did I forget something, this is quite important to do it right the first time, no, I think I'm okay, 118, 10, 19. Yeah, I'd rather cut a little bit more than a little bit less because uh, I can always fill it up with concrete or cement. So I've set up the uh, the laser level at my my line. I'm just going to uh, indicate on the wall where I have to cut with the big grinder. Okay, I'll stop here because uh, remember there's a door here on the outside and uh, I'm not going to cut into my concrete, I'm going to cut from there. And uh, the windows are one meter wide and the space in between the windows is going to be 50 centimeters, let me remeasure. Forty nine. Forty nine is the space in between the two windows because it's going to be one concrete block. And let me just remeasure quickly the windows. Measure twice, cut once. Yeah, guess what? Bloody windows are 105 cm wide instead of the hundred that we bought. Bloody hell! So that is. Uh, 105 and 105. Now we want to have uh, half there. Yeah, so a uh, 18, 18, 5, 3. And we want to have on. Uh, 
55 millimeter on the sides, so that's one centimeter, so that's two meters sixty. Oi! That's more than I was hoping for. In all honesty. Only installed this block to give me a point to measure with the laser uh, laser liner. So I need 260. Uh, this here is my that's the uh, horizontal line. Aim the dot on the horizontal line. Press the button. Two four five. Two four five. Jesus Christ! I need two five nine. Oh boy. Just yes, with this uh, laser uh, measuring tool, just gotta make uh, make sure that uh, I measure exactly on the horizontal line, which is indicated by the uh, by the laser. I have uh, attached the block there on that side, just so that the laser has a point to reach that. Uh, that that block is, is, is exactly installed at uh, where I have to stop uh, opening the wall. So, uh, God, I'm bad at explaining things. Huh? It's because I'm thinking in beta. There's numbers going through my mind. And I have to translate them into words trying to tell what I'm doing. Really difficult. I don't trust this uh, level gauge. I'm gonna uh, level gauge measuring tape, electronic measuring tape. I'm gonna get another one. I have two. Okay, I just uh, brought my other laser measure device because I just don't trust the one that I uh, have just used. Where's my green line, my horizontal line, where's my red dot, is that going on the green line, yeah, so that's following the green line, two five five five, this is fucking bullshit, bullshit, two seven two, I just move it uh, a few centimeters and it gives me a completely different measurement. Now I'm just going to calibrate my measuring tapes. I have been using this one. Huh? equal I mean I have been measuring using one measuring tape for everything so even if your measure the, the increments on the measure tape are off it doesn't really matter because they would be off with the same degree to every measurement I've taken but I'm just because now I, I start to uh, doubt everything And the thing is, I don't necessarily mind cutting twice, but it's really difficult with that heavy uh, grinder to cut a thin, uh, a thin, a thin strip off. 
and um, cutting off too much I can backfill it with cement with but, uh, concrete but it'll take every time it's 24 hours drying time you know setting time so you know if I make a mistake it could cost me a lot of time all right so these are equal and this is a pretty sturdy measuring tape let me just go again huh? this is perfectly on edge and I need a measurement of 259 hell I should have uh, yeah we didn't know now I mean the result is that I have to go further into that wall than I wanted to and uh, yeah well the lento still rests on a piece and the lento is also going to rest on that pillar in the middle but uh, I wanted to give it a little bit more beef to uh, to rest on. Or what I do is I make that post in the middle a little bit smaller. I can do that. I can do that. I'll show you. I'll show you. You see, these are the blocks that I'm going to use as a pillar in between the two windows, and they are 49 wide, but I can cut the edges off and then they become 46 wide. 46 that'll save me three centimeters it's three centimeters is uh, is something something we can probably work with the reason is I, I don't really want to go into that concrete because there's a door in front window sitting behind the door that doesn't make any sense so that would mean that I would have to remove the door and uh, make the wall look nice again that's 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 possible but then the windows are not sort of equally divided over the wall anymore they're set to one side and one side is oh that looks a bit odd and in order to completely center the windows I would have to take a whole lot of that wall down I'm not gonna do that Okay, uh, we gained three centimeters. So then we arrive at two five six. Two five six, huh? We calculate again, one hundred and five. I'm going to cut off uh, the edges and I'm going to cut them here so the post uh, that sits in the middle of the two windows is going to be this wide instead of this wide everything everything will be reinforced with uh, with uh, rods and filled with concrete so it's going to be really strong but uh, yeah yeah, I've, I've made my decision. There's going to be a lot more cutting, but I, I just want 
this end of the lantau to be sitting on a, a decent piece of wall and not, and not just barely uh, barely on top of the wall. Uh, it also doesn't look good and no. Nah. Nah. And and with regards to uh, structural integrity, it doesn't matter if I cut uh, one third off. It's going to be freaking strong anyway. So I'm gonna gonna measure again. Measure fucking five times. Cut once. Uh, two, four, three. That is right on the mark. That is where I'm going to have to cut. <laughs> oh boy. So, because this lantau lies deeper into the wall than this part, the line on the wall is slightly more to the right than where I've drawn it off. You gotta be so careful, huh? So now I gotta I gotta make sure that this line is equal to my mark instead of the line on the lantau. Hmm? You know what? I know all this because I've made every single mistake there is to make. I don't know whether the camera registered it, but I've got a nice blue-purple line. Lavender. Ah, uh, you, you know what just happened? I'm eating my sandwich. I am uh, looking at my beautiful lavender blue line and I say this isn't right. It's, it, it looks not horizontal. So I measure it with the spirit level and the spirit level says it's not straight vertical. So now I positioned this metal post stuck on my laser line and now it says that indeed my purple line is not strict, uh, straight uh, vertical. This should be the line and I've checked it with my spirit level. I'll check it with another one. Yeah, also this says that uh, this is the correct line. It's about a uh, good inch off at the bottom. Unreal, you gotta, you gotta measure 10 times before you cut once.
see, I want to have this uh, pillar uh, vertical, as vertical as as makes sense in a house that's uh, not square, and uh, to just uh, balance those blocks out because they're going to be loose on top of each other, and then I'm going to fill the whole lot with concrete. So uh, I'm not going to put cement or mortar in between those uh, joints but I'm gonna fill the whole lot with cement and reinforce it with rebar and if there are any leaking joints when I fill with concrete I'll just tape them with some duct tape temporarily and just to, uh, to get them more vertical I've, I've inserted uh, these plastic wedges I don't know whether you can see it against the light these are plastic wedges I've been having for years and years since I first bought them when I was installing a, a laminate floor. They just go in temporarily. Make sure that everything is straight. The rebar is going to be uh, running from here into uh, the land tile. I'm going to indicate where in the land tile I need to drill. Okay, now I'm going to take it down in the same sequence as we build up and then uh, I got to drill the bottoms through because they are sealed. It's a closed, uh, closed bottom. I want to drill it through so that the rebar can go through and the uh, concrete. <laughs> 